So what does all this Funko product showing up at Marshall's really mean? It means Funko's dying! That's pretty dramatic. But yeah, it's a bad thing that's going on right now. So if you're not already aware, Marshall's is getting a bunch of social media Freddy Funko Pops and sodas. Yes. And to give you a little bit of backstory about these Funko Pops and sodas, Funko used to give these items away. And they typically happened with giveaways or you would run into a Funko person at a Funko booth at a convention. It wasn't like they were just being handed to everybody or yeah. being purchased. They weren't even on the website. Yeah. These were special items specific to, for special events. And, and so, special people. And guess what? Right. Those special people aren't me and Chris because we didn't get a social media Freddy. I really have no dog in the fight with this. I was never handed one, so therefore it's hard for me to be ups totally upset about this. Oh, I can be upset about it, and I'll tell you why. I am upset about this for the people who did end up getting them. So I'll give you a prime example. A friend of ours, he messaged me today, and he said, basically at a convention, he had to kiss butt, making a joke, in order to get one of these social media Freddy sodas. And he goes, but now people are running out to Marshalls to buy them for $29.99 or whatever the price is. $29.99. He was lucky enough to get one at the event. And now it just seems like it doesn't even matter anymore. No. Like anybody can just go and buy these things. And he basically said in another comment to me that he is totally done with Funko. He, he wants nothing to do with Funko anymore. Yeah. And I completely understand. It puts a bad taste in your mouth. It does because Social Media Freddy should be one of those pieces that's like super duper special. And when anyone can just walk into a Marshalls and pick it up. Not a good that, sign. No, that's a problem. That really is a problem. And this is this issue is very reminiscent of last year. Do you remember what happened last year with the NFT pop that showed up at Marshalls and everyone was saying like they were putting the person down who yes, shared I it? Yes, I remember. Yeah, saying like they're messing with us and this didn't happen. Blah blah blah. Funko wouldn't let this happen. This this is proof that Funko lets crazy stuff happen. It's one hundred percent. I know that the NFT thing wasn't widespread. It very well could have been like a one-off mistake, but this has been happening for days now. We yep. have personal friends, multiple personal friends, who have found either the soda or the pop or both at their local marshals and another one of the pops that you're about to talk about. Well, here's the other one, the Hall Age Demogorgon. Yeah, we didn't so get into that. One of our friends, I just sent you the photos. I don't know if you wanted to show them or not, but it's a stack of at least four of them. I don't know if it goes deep or not, but it's at least four of them. Wow. Yeah. So they Right out of Marshalls. So they found a stack of four of them. Yeah, and someone else found a stack of four social media Freddies. Wow. Oh, my God. Look at this photo. So if you were one of the Hall H, like, SDCC people, and you were able to get this, and it was, like, really exciting, although the pop was never, like, the greatest, but you were really lucky to obtain one, well, it doesn't even matter anymore. So now it's basically like anything goes. Nobody cares so much. Like, Funko doesn't care so much. The fan base, I wonder, do you guys care about this? Does this even matter? Do you care about Funko anymore? On top of all of this, Funko, the new Fusion game came out, and IGN scored, gave it a very, very poor score. IGN is not my favorite. I'll say that. But we posted this on Instagram, and a lot of people were, one, hating on IGN, Typical. We had some people that were saying, I bought the game, and yeah, one bad. And then there were some people who said, I bought the game, and it's not very good at all. Hmm. And in fact, we got a message from one of our close friends last night saying that it was a very hard game, a lot of glitches, a lot of issues, which, you know, the company could probably fix that, right? They usually fix bugs yeah, and things. Yeah, a lot of times what happens is they'll continue to update it as time yeah, goes on. Exactly. So we could expect a bunch of updates to come out for the video game, and so that, therefore, it'll be... Uh, fine, it'll be able to be played. But we went to our local marshals today, and the local marshals had nothing. Somebody came in and completely wiped it out. It looked like they may have had some of this stuff. Yeah. But it was long gone. So we found the child big mom. Yes. No chase, and then it looked like there were holes on either side of her where something else lived. Yep. So somebody came in and just completely wiped them out. My question is, why did this Funko Pop and soda 
have a $30 price tag on it. It's weird. It is weird, because, right? Because, so I've seen fluctuating prices at Marshalls, for sure. Like, I remember last year I went during Christmas time, and they had some puffs for like $7.99, some for like $12.99, others for like $15.99, others for $19.99. Okay. It was really weird. But, like, the higher price ones were the bigger ones. Well, as of right now, I bet you there's somebody out there looking for this soda. It's currently valued, estimated value, fifteen twenty for that soda. Mm -hmm. Let's see. There's two variants, it says. Let's see. Okay, so it's going to talk about the red. So the red one is $2.10. Not so no $2.10 and fifteen twenty. So what do we think is going to happen there? Price is going to fall, right? I believe that the common will very quickly be... I, I think this week it'll drop to one fifty. Sealed can six ten. Wow. The Freddy Funko Pop social media that was going for thirty is down to sixty five. I think it's cheaper than that online. Is it? I think. I want to say that it is. So the prices will eventually drop. Now I don't know how many of these figures were sold out there. All we know is that they showed up at Marshalls for twenty nine ninety nine. So. You can virtually go out and open one of the cans and possibly pop open one of those blue social media Freddies that's going for $1,500, which is insanity. Yeah. The fact that they were actually in the stores. All the times that we've ever said that Funko is dying, right now it is literally on life support and I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen. And here's how I know that. I pay very close attention to views. I pay very close attention to what I see on social media in terms of like Funko news. Everything has dropped. Yeah. Our channel specifically has really bottomed out. Like in terms of views, like some of our videos get pretty good views, but a lot of them have completely bottomed out. Our videos get very good views when there's drama happening in the Funko community. Yes, typically, because people know that we get on here and we yell and scream. But what Funko is trying to do with this whole Marshalls thing is not take all their stuff to the landfill or trash. But why wouldn't they put it off for sale on their own website? That's the thing that is bothering me so much because listen, with licensed deals, there's typically like a start date and an end date. Like from the time you sign this contract, you can sell these products until X date in right. time. And that's when Funko has to be like, okay, we can't sell this anymore. Here's the trash or discount stores or whatever. This is their own IP. This yeah. is a Freddy Funko. So why would something like that even matter? Good Especially question. if it's free. Right, good question. I So my first thought was that it had sort of like a date that they had to get rid of it. But it's Funko's yeah. own product. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't understand it, but I'm just saying it felt like it was something like that. Like yeah. they have to get rid of them. But it still makes no sense because it wasn't an item that ever went up for sale. Yeah. This is an item that was handed out to people. No one ever bought it unless they bought it secondhand. Yeah. But here's the bigger question. Why is Funko doing this with the Social Media Freddy? Because that Social Media Freddy was something that was handed out specially for giveaways mm -hmm. and also in person, as I mentioned, at conventions. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that they're done with Social Media Freddy? Does that mean we're done with giveaways? Does that mean we're done with handing them out to people at conventions? Either that or they're revamping it. Possibly. So there is a new CEO and the new CEO ha probably has a new vision for how a lot of this stuff is going to go. Yeah, probably. But I don't know if that vision is any good, considering that we're seeing stuff show up at Marshalls. So Funko, it, to me, in my opinion, okay, in my opinion, seeing Hall H and seeing Social Media Freddy show up on shelves like this for at a dollar amount is a spit in the face of the collectors. Yeah. Because us collectors, we will obtain these things. We have a story about how we obtained it. Right? I got my social media Freddy from Mike Becker. I got it directly from him. He handed it to me. I was in a crowd and he handed it to me and it was so cool. It was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. Right? That is like, some people might be like, oh, that's fine, whatever, I don't care. But in the reality of it is, this sort of like, I don't know, it bruises the eye of the people who are able to get these things for a special reason. Yeah. And so the special occasion, the special feeling and all that stuff may make people feel empty now. Like, it's like, for what? Like, what if people stood in line, like, they got in fun days, and they stood in line, they're the very first person in line, and they're handed a social media Freddy. Yeah. And it was, like, so special that they were able to get that. And here, now, well, if you go to Marshall's, you get it for $29.99. <sighs> we have been doing videos 
for now going on what seven years mm-hmm. i think we were seven years in august by the way which is crazy we didn't have we didn't have a birthday party but we had seven years on this channel and i do not believe i've ever seen things as bad as it is right now everything yeah. just seems more dull no more excitement anymore i'm wondering if funko may revamp what's going on in the new year and then things will be exciting again but as of late Things have been pretty bad, and we talk about the Dire Straits on this channel every once in a while. I feel like we come on every once in a while and try to find some sort of light at the end of the tunnel. Like, oh, maybe in the new year things will be different. How many times can we say that? I agree. Because we keep seeing the same patterns, the same things that they say aren't going to happen are happening. It's a nightmare. Right, and I think that you're gonna have people who are defending this, and they're gonna say, being sold at Marshalls, I don't have a problem with that. It's the people, it's the people. So there was a, there's a, a select group of people who killed Funko. They were the reason, and I blame them for this. Now, I don't know if you're one of them or not, based off what I'm about to say, but when things were selling out on Funko Shop, and there was limited number of things, right? And, and th- they were hard to get items. People complained that there wasn't enough. And that is what killed Funko. Because mm-hmm. Funko saw that, they noticed what everybody was saying, I think they had their ear close to the ground, and they started making a lot more, especially during the time of the pandemic. Yeah. And that's a huge problem because as collectors, you can say all day in the comment section, I don't care about value. I would say more collectors than not care somewhat about value. Even if they're not flipping them, it's cool to have these like cheapy pieces that are more common in our collection, but it's extra cool remembering the time where you found this pop that you had fallen in love with Later turns out it's super rare. Now yeah. it's very valuable and it's like, oh man, I remember when I saw that sitting on a shelf at Walmart and I picked it up. It's right. such a good and very cool feeling as a collector because it brings back that memory for you. And it's like, man, I really felt accomplished when I found that's it. That's what happened with me with the Grady Twins. With the Grady Twins, yes. If they put Grady Twins chases out at Marshall's right now and it was just like Grady Twins chases everywhere, it would really dull, it would make it dull for me. Yeah. That was like the biggest Funko moment for me ever personally. Yeah. Because I don't do a lot of the convention stuff. Going to a Target, finding a Grady Twins chase in the wild is something I'll never forget. Yeah. It was a huge it was a huge deal. Well, me too, because you called me and you were screaming and I could hardly understand you. I was so excited over that. <laughs> it was so awesome. But let's exchange the word value for a second. Okay. With exclusivity. Okay. I like that. Exclusivity is really what people want. So they don't really, some people do care about value. That's, That's a really good point because people want to feel special and they want something that other people may not have. Exactly. And they want to feel special. Like I was one of the X amount of people who got this item. I'm now one of the X amount of people who owns it. Exactly. Period. Exactly. So it doesn't necessarily have to come down to value. It's exclusivity. People like knowing that they have the thing that everybody else wants. And so Funko has virtually removed all of that. And and we're seeing it like it has slowly gotten worse over the years. So today, uh, somebody shared something with me over in the UK. The boxes of fun, Mm -hmm. they marked them down like 50% off. So those boxes over there that we all paid top dollar for, now UK apparently it didn't do so well in no. terms of selling those boxes. Correct. So I kind of understand Funko dropping the price a little bit to just get rid of them. That's not but, a little bit. 50% but, is yeah, not Yeah, but something like that is in, insanity to me. And again, it's another kick to the face of the people who spent their hard earned money to get yeah. the boxes. Well then if you just waited, then who would care, right? Why not just wait and then you can get the boxes? In fact, Funko did yet another thing today they put up boxes that you could buy with points that it was a box a, a, a proto pirate box that came with an, um, a proto. It actually c- comes with a proto. Oh, so this is something they put out on their email. I got the email and I clicked the button to go to it. And a lot of people were confused because they thought that it meant use your points to buy a chance to get one. 
Mm -hmm. This is where you could buy it with your points, and I believe it was 3,400 points in order to get the box. The box comes with a mystery proto. They're sold out, by the way. They're gone now. Oh. Yes. So this is something else that they're doing. So now, it's like whatever they can do to get rid of those boxes, they're willing to do it, which does not bother me at all, considering that you know, we're talking about a company that's trying to stay afloat. They're trying to stay relevant. They're trying to do their thing. But it's, it's too, there's too many things happening at the same time. Yeah. That's the problem. With the Marshalls thing, which has only become like a bigger issue. I, for, as far as I'm concerned, this is not so much a, an instance, but an issue. Yeah. Because it's happening too much. It's now making the social media Freddies feel like not even important anymore. Yeah. These chases are showing up over there, which doesn't bother me as much either. But the Demogorgon does. And so with all of this, what else are we going to see show up over at Marshalls? What other thing on your shelf that is like super important to you? Exclusivity and value and everything wrapped up into that little ball that makes Funko fun for you. What else are they going to put in Marshalls or another cheapy store to crumble that ball of like excitement that you've held all this time. Black light Optimus Prime, baby. That's what I'm saying. Seven ninety nine. At, at this point, I don't put it past them. It's a very possibility that something like that could, in fact, happen. I'm concerned about it. I think as Funko fans, we should all be concerned about it. Yeah, it's uh, fun to run over to Marshalls and buy the things that you want to buy and say, oh my God, I got my social media Freddy. This is great. Um, it's all gr fun and good. Uh, you know, once you buy it and you have it at home. But think about what the repercussions are going to be. And that's yeah. with Funko making way too many of these Funko Pots, Funko Sodas, or whatever. The repercussions, it's long-lasting. And now, all the things that have happened over the last couple of years that we have warned you about. So if you've been watching us long enough, we have been warning people. People called us haters. They called us a-holes. They, they, I don't watch your channel because all you do is complain and all you do is whine and all you do is talk about how Funko's dead. We have been warning you for a long time. And I would say we have been warning you for at least four to five years. And the biggest warning that we put out there was that Funko was laying off all those people. They were losing a bunch of people and it just looked like things were not going well. Yeah. So I don't know what the state of Funko is going to be uh, next year. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I am really excited to see what they do at New York. Me too, but my hopes aren't very high. My hopes are not high either. I have no idea, as, as far as the map goes, how big their event's going to be. If it'll be that humongous Funko booth that we saw last year, or if it's going to be dumbed down and not as large as it once was. Because the reason why I bring this up, when we talked to New York Comic Con, I mentioned that I wanted to be on the side of the building with Mischief Toys, our toy company. By the way, go to mischieftoys.com and you can buy yourselves some hooded sweatshirts. We have all sorts of hooded sweatshirts on there, including Coven of Mischief uh, sweatshirts. You can go and buy them, hooded sweatshirts. And we also have zip-up hoodies for both the public release and also the Coven of Mischief release. So don't miss out on those because uh, they are fantastic and it'll be perfect for the fall and winter. I know I'm going to be doubling up on mine. I need a bunch because I love wearing my hoodies. Yeah, and they're very good quality. We very good quality. love the quality of the hoodies. Definitely go and check it out, mischieftoys.com. But when we talked to New York, I mentioned I wanted to be on the side of like where all the big dogs are. I said, mm -hmm. I want to be on the side of like the Funkos of the world, the 100% softs of the world. You know, the I want to be over there. Thrill Joy. Thrill, by the way, Thrill Joy is going to be there this year, which is Brian Mariotti's new joint. They're right down the road from us. Perfect. Maybe we can run into them. But basically, when I asked them about being on that side with all the big dogs, their response to me was really bizarre. They said that the collectible toy stuff isn't quite as popular anymore. So it wouldn't matter if you're over there or not. That's kind of like what they weird. said. It was a really weird thing. And what makes me think that was weird isn't 100% soft because they're doing really well. Yeah. Uh, Bondable Toys is doing really well. Mischief Toys, our company, we do well. Is it because Funko isn't going to have as big of a showing this year? 
Is that why they told me that? That's an interesting thought. I didn't even think about that. That's my thought, because if they're seeing Funko sort of shrink and have a hard time, does that mean that everybody else is affected, which is why they responded to me that way? I don't know. Again, I'm Mr. Doom and Gloom, as everybody loves to call me, but I, I love to uh, ponder about what's going to end up happening, talk about what the events are, and, and really get down into the nitty-gritty, even if it is negative, and sometimes it can be positive. But I think with this... This is super negative. The Marshalls thing is not a good thing. I think it's really bad, and I'm very worried for Funko. Yeah, it's not fun. You're on the same page as I am? I'm really frustrated over this situation just because I know a lot of people were really excited for those social media Freddies, and they would, like, enter the contest, yep. and they would get so excited if they ran into, like, Mike at a convention, and they he handed them a soda. Yep. And now it's almost like a slap in the face. A hundred percent. I totally agree. I, I would love to know your thoughts on this. You know, sometimes we're agreed with and sometimes we're not. And sometimes, like I said, people like to bash us over our thoughts. But I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section. You can say whatever you want. Uh, if you're angry, you agree, you disagree. I want to hear what you have to say. Is Funko officially going down the path of death? Are we burying it now? I want to know all that and more. But before we do that, uh, jump into our patron names. I want to mention that this Sunday, live, which is tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern, we will be unveiling, for the very first time, the character Mortem. And we're going to give you all the information that you need to know on how to obtain this. And there's a lot of information we need to share with you. If you want to get this figure, you must be there. We are going to explain a lot. There's something very special we're doing with this figure that we think you're going to love. Make sure you're right here at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, live. Hang out with us while we talk about Mortem from MischiefToys.com. In every video, we like to shout out to some of our patrons for Patreon. In this video, we'd like to shout out to Damian Spalma, George Shehede, Garrett, a.k.a. FastMo24, Esmeralda Alvarez, Michelle D., Chris Restivo, Deuce, Chavo, Hassan E., and Justin and Stacy McKenzie. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. We appreciate all of our patrons. You guys rock. And remember, we have an upcoming Patreon call coming very soon for the month of September, where we're gonna do giveaways, we're gonna hang out, and we're gonna show you our brand new day one New York Comic Con Mischief Toys exclusive. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it because we will be giving one of those away to a lucky patron, along with a bunch of Halloween related things, even a Loki Hot Toys, we're doing it big this month. So if you want to check out our Patreon, now's the time. Patreon.com slash GasserCast, where you can find out all the ways that you can support our lovely channel. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell. That way you'll know anytime we go live or post brand new content. We post new content every single day, but Sunday, Sunday is our live day. So come and join us this Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, where we're going to talk about Mischief Toys Mortem, a figure people have been salivating after for about a year. So make sure you come and hang with us during our live. But that's all we have for you. We will see you guys in the next one. Bye.